let's praise God. Choir anointed praise team, music ministers, staff officers, dancers, and security. Well, I'm, I am so excited because one of our daughters that was birthed out of this ministry, and she's, they've called her from around the nation to come and speak. She's a powerful woman of God. She has a ministry in Fort Myers, well, Lehigh Acres slash Fort Myers area of Florida, a women's ministry, and she is a powerful, powerful woman of God and a woman of integrity. Amen? And when you mix integrity and power, you got something. You got a great anointing. I want you to welcome a very loving, precious, kind, powerful woman of God, Pastor Roxanne McGraw. We please stand and give her a hand clap. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory be to God, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's the highest praise. We're going to just take a couple seconds to give God praise. He's great. He's mighty. He's a king of kings and lord of lords. He's our God. He's our way maker. He's the prince of peace, the mighty God, our counselor, our director, our joy, our hope. Everything we need is in him. Our rest, our peace, our director, our protector, our redeemer, our restorer, our way maker. He's God. He threw the stars in the sky, set the sun in place, and the moon at night. He's mighty and he's faithful. Somebody shout, God is faithful. He's faithful. Amen. While you standing, amen. I want to thank my pastors, Dr. Dr. C and Dr. J. I love you so much. Amen. It's something about being in the right place at the right time. I was raised up in this ministry. I look nothing like I, like I did when I initially came to this church. Extreme introvert. In fact, in high school, I got the most quietest award. I then made that up for me. And as a kid, I felt a demonic hand over my mouth like I couldn't really talk. I just never talked a lot. And somehow along the line, that hand dropped off. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. But I want to thank God for my pastors because if it was not for them, I would not be where I am. It is, it is Dr. J who told me, had me come preach. I was supposed to dance, y'all. And Dr. J said, before you go to Florida, I want you to preach. And it's something about being in the right environment that produces who you are. And that is just what happened to Shoe Fit. I got up and I've been going ever since. And I thank God for my pastors who I didn't know as I was sitting in the environment that I was learning how to teach the word of God, even though I was having visions. Amen. Amen. So, so God is good. I got just a little bit of time. And so I want you to put your hands together. Yes. I want you to put your hands together for our pastors. Woo! And now this hand, I got my notes, but sometimes I just like to let the Holy Ghost go. I mean, I have my notes, but sometimes it just flow. This hand I want to put, put, I want you to put together for yourself, but not yet. I want you to put your hands together because um, before the foundation of the earth and God created the whole world, and he put everything in place, and then he took the time. He, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, and he created somebody, some bodies in secret. And, and that those people were so important that nobody could know about this thing. Amen. And nobody could know about this thing because it was made as his, his image. And God is so powerful that nobody can fully know who he is unless you are in him. Let me tell you something. You are in him. And so, and so I want to tell you, each and every one of you, that your destiny is dependent on your presence. A lot of people are not here tonight. They should have been here tonight. Because I'm telling you, I believe in the principles of the word of God, and that's how I live. And everything God teaches out of what I live. I believe the word of God. I love God. I love God. And I'm not duplicitous. I have one face. The word of God says, let your quiet answer speak louder than your words. So my quiet life 
looks just as good as my life out in front. I don't slip and dip at night and come to church. I'm celibate without selling a bit. And I ain't shamed. I've been with one man in my life, and I ain't doing nothing until I get married again. And I ain't shamed to say it. Go ahead and sit down. So I love God. Amen. So I just got a little bit of time before you, but I wanted to say that, that your destiny is dependent on your presence. Because destiny is choice driven. I'm not trying to go in that area, but I just got to say this. Your destiny is choice driven. It's not up to God, it's up to you to pr pull out what he has for you. And so what I want to do before I jump into the meat of my message is I want to establish the kingdom. Amen. Because if I don't, if I just jump right into my message without establishing what the kingdom is, then, then you may just leave here going along and doing the same thing that you've always done. So I have to establish the kingdom. Repeat after me, say, we are about to, are about to establish, establish the, kingdom. the kingdom. Now, we already know where we live. We live in the United States, and we're under... Uh, a diplomatic uh, uh, democracy and the democracy is where the people are the ruling authority okay but and so the problem with that is from birth and for generations we are used to being in control we're used to calling the show we're used to things going our way. Not only is it set up like that governmentally, but it's set up like that from birth. When you cry, somebody better pick me up or I won't stop. Right. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So we're groomed in that governmental system. I'm going to talk very political. We're groomed in this governmental system. The problem with that is that once you give your life to Christ, you enter a new system. Here's another problem with that. The flesh does not get saved. Nor will it ever be saved. It has to be continually renewed. So when you get saved, the problem with the kingdom of God is that you try to bring one governmental system into another. So when you come to church, because you are not under authority, you can still live any kind of way. Because you have not come under authority, you can choose whether you want to pay tithes. You can choose whether you're going to have sex outside of marriage. You can choose whether you're going to have sex in marriage with somebody else. You can choose whether you're going to have sex with the same sex. I don't come here to play. And I got to leave anyway, so if y'all don't like me, oh well. But I think y'all going to love me, right? try to attack me too many ways for me to play and I got one life I'm gonna make the most of it amen, amen. so we uh, we enter into a whole new governmental system in the kingdom of God the minute you get saved what happens is your spirit man becomes new but your flesh does not so you get access access to the kingdom of God under the kingdom of God, we enter into a constitutional government. Say constitutional government. Say I'm under, I'm under a constitutional government. A constitutional government is a government where you are not in control. There is, there, there we have a set of rules or, or there's a system that we come under. 
Let me say it this way. We have a set of rules that we come under. And this is why when that guy, when that guy came to, to Jesus and he said, heal my family member, I don't know, it was his daughter. And, and, and Jesus said, and the guy said, I don't, you don't have to come to my house. Um, I'm a man uh, under authority. You just say the word and I know what's going to happen. Jesus was like, oh my God, you understand what system we under. See, people think that Christianity is a, re is, is a, is a, a, a religion. But this is about a relationship. We have entered into a new system of the kingdom of God. And in that system, we have authority and we have power on this earth. In that system, I don't pick and choose what I want to do. I'm under authority. Yes, Lord, I got my command. Man, I read that word of God and I got my command. I love this system because the enemy cannot win. I didn't say what it looked like. I said he ain't winning. Amen. In this system, you can't be sick. In this system, there is no poverty. Listen to this. Neither is there any mediocrity. There's only opulence. Amen. If you read the word of God, you'll see what God talks about, how we are royalty. Amen. Kings of kings. We're kings and queens. God sees us as royalty. He sees us as kings and queens. You got to begin to see yourself as who you are, not because it's how you feel, not because of what life has dictated to you, not because somebody what has told you, but you are under authority and God has created you that way and that's just who you are whether you like it or not. So we have to get an understanding. We're in the last days. So we got to buckle down. And we've got to get back to who we are. And we've got to begin to take our rightful place. The place that I'm talking is not a physical position. It's a spiritual position. We got to begin to take dominion. And we got to stop being so weak. I'm sorry, women, but so emotional. Use those emotions to defeat the kingdom of darkness. I'm going to get my word, but I'm going to just let the Holy Ghost flow because I'm full of the word, so it's going to come out. I ain't going to give you no foolishness. Yes, I'm telling you. I'm, let me read this scripture right here. Because... Um, <clears throat> God is powerful. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I know because I'm up here. Hallelujah. God is moving. Praise God. Um, <clears throat> I tried to say too much until it's time for me to, you know, say too much about my testimony. But this I will say. Matthew 5 and 10. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What y'all weak? You, you gonna get persecuted? Well, you shot. If you get in the ring, expect a punch here or there, but at the end of the round, you win. If you go to, the, uh, to Iraq to fight, expect to be shot at. You just make sure you got yours out ready to shoot back. I love the word of God because when we fight in the word of God, you get rested. You get stronger. When you fight in the battle, you get a reward. You don't come out wore out and tore up. I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I look in the mirror and I say, my God, you have just, ex you, 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 you didn't, look, now, hey, now, nah, now, nah. wait, hold up, girl. You like, I like my own flame. I mean, I should be looking tore up from the last season, <laughs> but I'm stronger. I'm wiser, I'm more loving, I'm more courageous, I have more focus on purpose. I can know you don't like me, it don't bother me none, I will hug you and Lord, Lord, watch my back. It don't bother me if you don't like me, girl, how you doing? Praise God, I love you, and we'll pray for you too, but 
ain't gonna go eat with you. No, I'm, I'm gonna teach you how to release the supernatural. I'm gonna let you meditate on that for a little bit. Because you think you, you, a lot of people think that Satan is their problem. Satan is not your problem. You are your problem. Satan already been defeated. Satan is not stopping you. And God can't stop you. Because he pulled himself out and gave you jurisdiction over the earth. The only person that can ever stop you is you. Whoever watching me live stream, the only person that can stop you is you. I'm a living witness. I got so many testimonies. People just see the drama or whatever. But I got so many testimonies. I got one for you, Dr. J. But I'm going to tell you, I live in a constant, perpetual, um, supernatural lifestyle. I, I couldn't even have time to tell you the supernatural things that happened to me. But I'm going to give you one. And I'm going to teach you how to pull something that does not exist in this realm. I'm going to teach you how to pull it out of yourself. Where's the kingdom that is in you? I didn't finish that. Let me finish. Matthew 5 and 10. It says, blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. Of theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kind of evil things because of me. Rejoice and be glad because your reward is great. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets, they will persecute you. I'm excited. You know why I'm excited about the attack? Because if I don't give up, I already won. And my reward is great. And, I have, and I'm and I'm going to get my reward in heaven. But here's the thing. When I got saved, the kingdom got in me, and I got access to heaven now. So I'm getting some, ju I'm getting some stuff right here. Y'all keep watching. Keep watching. I'm the wrong person to mess with. Guess I'm a major threat to the enemy. I am a major threat to the enemy. That's why he had to allow me and try to sabotage my character, to try to destroy my purpose because I'm a major threat. But I already know this. I ain't got to fight no battle. I don't fight with my hands. I'm too cute for that. I ain't ripping my clothes. I love tearing my hair up, wear wrinkles in my face, can't sleep at night. No, that happened to me one that I had to get up and begin to tell the devil who he was oh, uh, and got myself back and got back in the bed. No. I got a long way to go in the kingdom of God, and I can't wear myself out worrying about what I can't control, when, worrying about what God is already taking care of. Not today and not yesterday, before the foundation of the world, he already took care of it. So say this, say, I'm under a new system. I'm under the kingdom of God. You're going to have to get the CD and you know, listen to it because I'm going to just go through these scriptures because I don't have much time to be before you. But Isaiah 9 and 6 says, For well, unto us a child is born, and unto, his son, uh, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So that's just letting us know that we are under a new government. And so what we have to understand is that how the kingdom will work. The kingdom of God works through principles and laws. God is very legal. God is very legal. So when you come and you get this awesome, transforming word from Dr. C and J, when you come here, your job is to get as many principles and laws as you can. When they tell you to, to be faithful with your giving, what that is, is that is for you. There's several blessings that come along with that. God said he'll make your name great. How many need a promotion? How many want God to speak on their boss's heart? Are you a tither? If not, you're illegal in the kingdom. And so when you go before God, talk, tell, asking everybody to pray for you, Facebook, going on Facebook talking about pray for me, and when ain't nobody praying for you, prayers up, ain't nobody praying for you. 
Matter of fact, you shouldn't be asking folks to pray for you. You should say, come into agreement with my stand. Because what you have not done is built up your own faith when you're trying to get somebody to intercede for you when it's according to your faith and not theirs and how you know they even got anything. You begging folks on Facebook and then ain't nothing happening. You talking about this God thing don't work. Listen, Isaiah 61 and 11 says it is, a, it is the soil, it is the garden that makes the soil fertile. Meaning there is nothing wrong with the word. It is your heart. The word always works just like a seed. But if you took a seed and you put it in sand, it won't produce because it's in the wrong environment. Not because the seed is not potent, not because there's not a forest in that seed, it is because you have it in the wrong environment. And you can take a same seed like a, like a rose which requires real fertile soil, and you can put it in any old soil and it won't hardly produce because it needs richer soil. But you can take the same plant and a farmer who knows what he's doing can plant it in that soil and cultivate it, it and it will produce a harvest, acres and acres of beauty or food or whatever it is, I want to ask you, how, how fertile are you? How rich is your soil? But because, because it is going to determine the power behind your words. You see, there is a force that goes behind your words. And when you train your heart, I'm jumping away, I'm looking at this time, but I'm... You think your problem is outside of you, your problem is in you. That's why I'm gonna say you can take me and put me in any environment and I'm gonna produce. And guess what? I don't need nothing outside of me, just give me me and the word. And I bring the happy, I bring the increase, I bring the joy, I bring the peace. I'm an incubator of it. Wherever I go, I just deliver it all over the place. I set the temperature. I set the atmosphere. I'm a producer. Matter of fact, because I have this anointing, you had to catch some. A lot of times when the word of God is going forth, people, and, and you begin to hear the word of God, and the pastor is telling you that the blessings are all around you, you're looking around for an outside answer. But what you got to do is begin to look on the inside of you and pull that thing up out of you. It's not outside of you. Your car is in you. Your house is in you. Your husband is in you. Your wife is in you. Your breakthrough is in you. All you got to do is get that word of God, sow it in your heart, and keep a right heart. Don't get offended. Walk in love. Be obedient. Pay your tithes. Walk in love. Don't slip and dip, and if you do, come on out and repent. Repent means to turn away from your wickedness. It don't mean just to cry. It means to turn to go in your direction. Because let me tell you something about sin. People don't want to talk about sin no more, but what sin does, it does not, it does not stop God's hand. Sin does not stop God's hand. You know what sin does? God's hand is done. God is not working on your blessings. I know we say that because it sounds good. God is not working your blessing out for you right now. Everything God did was done in six days. Everything is laid up in the heavenlies. And we have access to it in heaven. And guess where heaven is on the earth? It's inside of me. It's a realm. So I can access heaven at any time. Heaven is not outside of me. And this is why the enemy hates you so much. Because he got kicked out of heaven. You got to get nerve to get saved and have heaven in you. I got heaven in me. That's why I can pray for my enemies. Not from my heart. That's why I can sleep in peace. That's why I can live in a state all by myself and produce a shop debt free in seven days. 
get two lawsuits canceled. I'm talking about using principles. Get the place where I live, releasing my faith for four chairs to go to my dining room chair. I open the garage up, chair sitting right there waiting on me, the same chairs that I've been looking for, couldn't find. The ladies, I guess, got so much, it's, it's almost, it's shameful, God. You're embarrassing me, Lord. Stop, stop. <laughs> you love me too much. I'm telling you, God, God got us covered. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, everybody in here, you could turn your life around just like this if you get this message tonight. But let me warn you, you're sitting in an anointed environment. So you'll think that this parable how will you understand any parable? And he begins to talk about the seed that's sown. And he talks about four different people, four different types of people. And the first person he talks about is a person of unbelief. They hear the word of God and they just reject it. And then the second person he talks about is a person who hears a word, but they're not rooted in the word so they get wiped out quick. The third person, watch it, because this is where most people fall. This is where most people fall. It says the cares of life and the word, the deceitfulness chokes out the word. You know what that is? That's everyday life. Work three jobs, don't have time for God. Worried about this. Watching any old thing, let anything in your eyes, listening to anything, and so it's choking the word out. So this is the person that comes to church, knows the word, but does not take responsibility for what's in them. This is the person that does not value God like they say they do. They value him with their mouth, but not with their heart. And that's where most people fall, because those people fall out the game. Those are the people that say the word don't work. Those are the people that say, I know, but I'm sick. Those are the people that say, thank you, Father God, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for me to just, but how much is gas? It's a seed. I don't count no doggone gas when I pull up to that cake. I pull up that 93. I pull up. I, 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 if God, listen, if he can't, if I can't fill my tank up with a God that owns the entire universe, trillions and trillions and trillions of galaxy out there, if I can't trust my God that can set the sun in the sky and the moon at night and neither has it ever failed us one single day, if I can trust the God that when I look out and you say you'll, he, and he says you'll know my what my, my who I am by my invisible qualities. Sometime at night I'll get on my little night and I'll look at the stars and I just get, I, I just, oh God, I love you so much. Look how faithful you are. There's never been a night where there's never been a star. That's telling me about his character. You're faithful, Father God. I think he can put a couple nickels and dimes in my tank to fill it up. I wish I would count some dimes, and I ain't about to have no conversation. Listen, Sunday, Dr. C was talking about we got to get bold and don't let people say anything. I don't let nobody say anything over me, and guess what? I don't have no problem with shutting you down in love. And if you want to keep on, I do two things. I say, why don't you speak that over yourself, but as for me, I'm safe, so they already know at my shop. Say it with love, you know. No, I don't, I don't allow it. I'm a, woman, I'm a woman under authority. I don't get to choose what I say out my mouth. I don't get to choose who I allow people come around me. I don't get to choose whether I want to feel like it or not. I don't, get to I don't get to choose this. I'm under authority. I'm telling you how to produce the supernatural. Amen. 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 Say this, say, I'm producing, I'm producing the supernatural. The supernatural. 
I come to tell you tonight that you're it. It's on you. And now I want to get a little bit more personal. I want to get a little bit more intentional. I want to get a little bit more individual. I want to get a little bit more in your face corporately, but it's just you and me. When God created you, he created you for a reason. He created you because he put something in you that was supposed to be, that is supposed to be, and that's going to be distributed in this day and hour. And it's contingent on you knowing who God is, where you're operating, and who you are. And if you think you have some great accomplishments, then you are mistaken. Because inside of you is an unlimited uh, abundance of who you are, and you will not be able to tap it, nor does God need your permission to bring it out of you because you don't even know it's there. He said, every ordained day was written for you before one of them came to be. That means that if I get under this constitution of the kingdom of God, this constitutional government, and, and I come to my church, EOC, and I get rooted and grounded in the world, in the word, then I don't have to worry about my life. And let me tell you why. Because God created you specifically for a purpose. And the reason that you like the things that you like, that you have the gifts that you have, that you have the personality that you have, is because God has a specific purpose for you. And so when the word of God goes forth, what it does is it goes to everybody individually. And what it is going to do is going to reach down in you and it's going to unlock the God in you. This is why I'm not worried about a husband. And I, I, I'm well watered. I'm not thirsty. Neither am I burning. Neither am I desperate. And I ain't got to show nothing extra because my value is in who I am is not in what you see. Because that's changeable, but who I am is not. If you begin to sit under this word, apply these principles, and grab every bit of juice that comes out of this word, run out of here and begin to go apply it. Take the kingdom to your job. Take the kingdom in your car. If you see somebody driving crazy, don't say, oh, they're driving crazy. Your words got power. You just release words that never die into the atmosphere. And even if they don't cause that accident, they could cause another accident because words don't die. You can release the kingdom. Say, I covered him in blood, Lord, whatever it is, cause him to stop. If they need to, the police need to stop, need to go to jail, Lord, whatever it is, I cover him. You see an ambulance go by, release the kingdom. Say, I plead the blood of Jesus, Father God, send a laborer to him. Don't let him die without, leave this earth and go to hell. You see somebody over here, job, boss on your job that's giving you a problem, begin to go pray for him. Just bless him. Go bring him something. And you ain't got to be so deep as the Lord told me to do it. Just be the kingdom. And you ain't got to post it on Facebook. What's going to happen if you go to seeking God, what's naturally in you is going to begin to come out of you. I did not know when I was sitting under Dr. C and J that I was learning how to preach. But it was in me. And I never asked for it. I never knew it. But because I was planted in the right environment, and I didn't move myself out with my grown self, 
for all my grown and sexy folks. Because I did not move myself out and I was faithful, not perfect, but faithful. I'm telling you how to produce a supernatural. Then at the proper time, a new level came out without my permission. God is not looking for your permission. He's looking for your agreement. I just agree with the word of God. I just agree that God is faithful. I just agree that I'm, I'm rich. And keep saying it till you believe it. I agree that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for me. In fact, it's no longer weighed up for me, but I receive it into my bank account right now in favor and cash. I believe that hidden riches in secret places are laid up for me to just. I believe that you use men to give to me good measure, press down, shaking together and running over. And not only do they give to me, but I am the man that gives to other people good measure, press down, shaking together and running over. I'm a distribution center for the kingdom of God. I'm a major blessing. Dispensing goods to others. I'm telling you, you got, this, is, this is who you are. You got to begin to take your authority. And stop letting that bill tell you off. It's in your house threatening you. It's in your house making you lose sleep. I wish you would. I got my mama and me. My mama bust some go downs and I was going, I'm nice because she wasn't, but she is not. It's true. We intimidated in our own house. When you got the authority, it would be the same as somebody calling the police, he got the gun and the badge, he running to see the problem and go run in a, cor a corner and cry. We look into God, Lord, give me an answer. You see, God is very legal. This is why you need to know the word and what it says and how to say it. We're asking him to give us something that we already have. We're asking God for peace. He said, take it. My peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world give it, do I give it unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Stop being a punk and take your peace. Just start taking stuff. Just start, like my sister said, just sit, we're snatching stuff. We're just snatching stuff. Just start taking it. I'm telling you, this is all in authority. This is all in who we were created to be. And because time is winding down, I got to jump down to the end of my message. I got to skip through some stuff, but God is good. Amen. Amen. And so with that being said, I'm going to jump down to here, releasing the supernatural. And um, can you just cue the video up, but don't show it. And so I believe that, I, I, I believe the word. That's why I'm so dangerous. I, I know this. See, dangerous is not in your tone. Kingdom dangerous is not in your tone. It's in your heart. It's in knowing who you are. I'm very dangerous to mess with, I'm just telling you. I'm very dangerous to lie on, I'm very dangerous to, to try to, uh, I'm, I'm just very dangerous to do it. I'm telling you, I am, and I know it. And I believe it. And so, here's what I want to get to. I said all this to say this. What? How much time I got? Wait a minute, what happened to the clock? I'm, I got to stay on this clock. I'm at five minutes. Let me just jump and say this. Put my time back up. Because I keep going. And I know I want, if Dr. J and C have me back, I want to come back because I want to stay on cue. And stay obedient. So anyway, here it is. All, I said all that to say this. Proverbs 4 and 20. My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and help to one's body. Above all, else, uh, above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth from perversity. Keep corrupt talk from your lips. 
Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the path of your feet and, and this, be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. I wanted to say that to say this. There, is, there, are, about, there, are, there are several ways. <laughs> Here's what I'm going to say. Here we go. Here is how you produce the supernatural. Because I told you it's in you. How many want to know how to produce the supernatural? How many want to know how to do it every time? Every time, say every time. Every time. Here's the key, but it's going. I'm, I'm about to cuss, Doctor CNJ. Please forgive me. Okay. You won't have to work. I said the four-letter word. <laughs> you won't have to work. Excuse me for that four-letter word. <laughs> but this kind of work is not toil. Right. That's the blessing. But it would call some time out your schedule. You know what that is? One, you got to watch your gates. As a, as a citizen of the kingdom, you, it is illegal for you to let anything in and out of your gate. Your eyes and your ears. Here's what happens to your eyes. There are about 40 to 50,000 impressions that go through our eyes a day. And, and what that is doing is that is creating who you are. Especially now with Facebook. Because on one clip, we got somebody dead in the street on a literal person with blood all over the head, all the ground. Then in the next clip, you got somebody um, getting married. Then in the next clip, you got somebody um, in Hawaii, um, um, Hawaii, their backyard. Then you got somebody, so you got all this different, and is what it's doing is it's just evening everything out where there is no right or wrong anymore. There is no right or wrong anymore because I can look at somebody dead and I feel sad, then I can look at somebody getting married and I can feel happy, then I can look at a little baby and I feel cute, and then I can go over here and look at this perversion, and then that, and then. So what happened is everything is going on an evil plane, and you don't realize it, but the enemy is strategically sowing into your heart a coldness. To, to the word of God, where, where I, I could take it or leave it. Because nothing excites me. It's even. And this is how that law could just be passed a couple years ago. Don't bother people no more. Now it's everywhere. So what happens is when you feed your eyes all these different things, it's coming at you any, any way in. Subliminal messaging is a multi-billion dollar business industry a year where they implant body parts on people, personal body parts, and they put, you know, sexual words and things. So you're getting fed this anyway all day long. And, and then you say, well, that don't mean, that little bit over there, that ain't nothing. I can, I can watch, I don't even know what's on TV no more because I don't really watch it. But I, I, I watch HGTV, the word of God, that's why I watch. But I don't even know the shows that's on. You know, I won't watch that. I'm, I'm under authority. That's going to sow wickedness in my heart. And one or two shows or three shows might not do this, but keep watching the cycle of it. And, and, and let's get it on. Hey, ain't nobody here with me. It will sow a seed. Now, this is what's happening to you, whether you like it or not. You are a sponge, and you do not have a choice of what you absorb. Just don't put yourself around it. You absorb everything you put yourself around. And this is how when you sometimes you lay down at night, stuff pop up in your spirit that you didn't know was there. Because all day you're letting this stuff get in your heart, and out of the abundance of your heart, that's who you are. So what you got to do is you got to start cutting off all this stuff that you put in your eyes on. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. This is to produce the kingdom. This is for fertile soil. Then you got to watch your ears. Faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So what you got to do is watch what goes into your ears. Because that's going to determine how you believe. What happens is your eyes and your ears, you know what this goes down to? As a matter of fact, in, in, in Mark 4, Mark, in, in the Gospels, I know it says this, have faith in God. 
Jesus said. Truly I say. Now this is God. This is Jesus saying truly. So it's a double truly. This is Jesus saying truly, truly. This is truly saying truly. It's truly I tell you. If anybody says to this mountain and does not doubt in his heart but believes that what he says is going to come to pass, it shall happen. So, so what happens is you got stuff coming up here and here and you're letting it slip and so the problem is not so much here, you got because you can stop this. The enemy knows this with here. So you're not stopping stuff all day long because you ain't stopping all the stuff you're watching. I, I want to say this too, you only battle what you give yourself, um, what you open yourself up with too. You're battling stuff you should not be battling because you've opened yourself up too wide. I don't battle things because I don't open myself up to them. You only think about what you've given permission to get in you. So these things are dropping in our heart. Now we got the word. We're putting it in our heart and it's not working like it should. Because Isaiah 61 and 11 says, it's not about the seed, it is the soil that makes the seed grow. So we got to start getting the word in our ears continually. YouTube is great. Get the word in our ears continually. Look at the word. Find a way to be a blessing. Thank God. Live this life so that you can produce. And I got to say this because I'm low on time. But y'all ready for this miracle? Yeah. I said, are y'all ready for this miracle? Yeah. I said, are y'all ready for this miracle? Y'all yeah. better act ready for this miracle. Yeah. God is good. I think y'all are ready. <laughs> so here it is. And I got these stories all over my life. I mean consistently, all over and over. But here it is. I co-signed for, for a car from somebody some years ago. And um, I drive a Mercedes. And so at the end of this lease, um, that repo came up. Now, I've never missed, I've been late on a car payment as of myself. But this is like came, bam, in the middle of, um, now it's time for a new car. So they called me early so I can trans uh, to, to get a new car. And then they saw that on my report and they denied me. Now, because I'm not a mere human, because I don't need the answer outside of me, I know that I can produce it in me, because my heart is fertile, because I, night and day I meditate on the law of the Lord, and then I'm like a tree planted by the streams of water that uses fruit in this season, and leaf does not wither, whatever I do prospers. So here it is now. You know what I said? I don't care what you say. I'm a heir with Christ and a co-heir with Jesus Christ, and I own that car dealership. I can get anything I need out of this earth that is for me. All I need to do is go get the seed of the word of God, plant it in this fertile soil, and I can produce it. That's just what I get. Jesus said, go to them donkeys and get me one that's never been written. And if anybody asks you what you're doing with it, tell them the Lord have need of it. Well, Lord, I'm Roxanne, and I need that new car because I'm a representative of the kingdom of God. And if anybody asks me what, who, what, I, what I need with this brand new car, well, my other one's still brand new, I say the kingdom of God, the glory, needs to be represented on the earth. You said, whatever I decree, it shall be established. You said, if I bind on heaven, it shall be bound in earth. You said, if I loose in heaven, it shall be loosed in earth. You said that I'm an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and my word and my testimony. You said I can have, if I abide in you and your word abides in me, that I can have what I want. Because the thing don't have me, I have it. Amen. And so here's what I did over a period of time. I, here's what I did. I sowed a seed. I used another principle. Bam. I push my plate back, bam, this is kingdom. Do I feel like pushing the plate back? No, but I'm under authority. I began to prophesy and speak. I went on Facebook, I went on Google, and I found me the car I wanted. Because if you can see it, you can get it. The reason why you sat in that seat is because you saw it. See, in the kingdom, faith is not blind. You could see. So you got to be able to see it, because if you can see it, you can imagine it, and you can get to it. 
So I went online, I picked me out the car I wanted, I narrowed it down to the year, I was very specific because God is very specific, and I saved it on my phone and I wrote, God has given me this car. And, my, I, and then I began to grow the capacity within me. I got four seconds, Dr. I finished it. So I, got, I began to increase. We said, oh Lord, bless me, enlarge my territory. Let no sin rule over me. You've got to become bigger on the inside than you are on the outside. So I began to increase the capacity of who I was. And I began to see my old car is old and I began to clean it out. And I say, and it's still a new Mercedes, but I began to clean it out because it was no longer mine. And I got on my phone and I looked at it every day because I have to put this before me because what I'm doing is I'm calling my car to me. It is not up to me to try to create who it is or how I'm going to get it because a lot of times people will look at a situation and they will map out how God is going to do it. Then what happens, and they, they'll pay, piggyback off of somebody else's testimony. But what happens is when God don't come through that way, then you think he don't work. Because what you do know is God is going to come through, but you, what you don't know is how. Because he's multifaceted. If you knew how, it wouldn't be faith. So I looked at the phone and I said, I call you to me, you 2017 E350. I command you to come to me now. And everywhere I went on the road, I saw my car. I said, ooh, that's my car in gray. And, ooh, there's my car in white. And I got excited and I built up an expectation and an for, for, for what God was about to give me, what, what, what I was going to release that was already mine. One day in May, I said, I'm going to call this the month of grace. And so what I did is I laid on my couch and I didn't shondo one bit enough. And I said, Lord, it sure would be nice for me to drive to Georgia at the end of this month in my new car. <laughs> and at the end of the month, God gave me some instruction coming out of my sleep. He said, fast, you're going to get a breakthrough. And I didn't know what it was, but I said, Lord, listen to this. I release the grace. Not give me the grace. It's already mine. I release the grace to be obedient to fast. It's legal. You got to know how to talk. So I was obedient to do it. And on Sunday, after I completed my fast, he gave me more instruction. He said, he said, labor in the word for three days. So that's what I did. And on the fifth day, the enemy tried to talk me out my blessing. I was shampooing the head, and all of a sudden, it just overwhelmed me. You're not going to get no car. You ain't going to do this. Uh, and it, kept, it, it made me do this. You know what I said? You wait till I get out of here and wear your butt out. <laughs> Don't play with me. And I wore his butt out for the 10 minutes it took me to get home. I ain't raised my voice. I said, I'm going to wear your butt out. And I went home. I spoke the word of God from my daughter home. That night, God led me to get up and just praise him. So in the dark, I just was praising him for about two minutes. I ain't feel extra. I ain't feel extra holy or nothing. I was just shouting all around my room, thank you for the black, thank you, thank you. In the dark, no music. I got in the bed and went to sleep. <laughs> On the sixth day, Mercedes being called me. <laughs> and they called me, the en God used the enemy. He used the enemy. Let me boil it down to this. I end up going down there. And I, 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 I got to shorten it up one day. I'll give, give you more testimony. But all I'm going to tell you is this. I left to Georgia at the end of that week in my new car, and the people said it was a miracle. They said, somebody knew you. I don't know nobody in those hat offices, but God had my angel up there. Come on, stand up. Stand up real quick. I'm here to encourage you. Oh, it, wait, th there it is. You see on that God? That's it. God has given me this car. And listen, I, I was adamant about a 2017, but they didn't make that in a 2017 anymore. So this is the next best thing, 2017 C300 that I got, and it was pulled straight out of the heavens. Now I look at that car, I said, Lord, them rims had my name on it, but it was in the invisible ram. And had I never stood for it, I would have never got it. I'm here to tell you that there's something that you're not getting that's got your name on it. And if you don't stand for it, you won't get it. But God is waiting on your authority. He's waiting on you. Let me encourage you that God has already got everything taken care of for you. Not only that, but Jesus is at the right hand of the Father and he's praying for you and he's vouching you and he's saying you're going to make it. Not only that, but God uses his angels to do his bidding and they're waiting on your command. All of heaven, all of heaven stands up and they're waiting on you. They're waiting for you to take your authority. They're waiting on your command and God is saying you can do it. Come on, if you don't get weary and well doing, you're going to reap the harvest. 
all you have to do is not give up and you have access to blessing. All of heaven is waiting on your command. You speak the word only. You stand on the word of God and God is going to make it happen and the supernatural, I decree, it shall be revealed in you. Amen. Praise God. Let's thank God for Pastor Roxanne McGrum. The two words that come to my spirit when she ministers is deep well. That well is, that well is deep. Amen. Uh, rock solid word. And, uh, you do have to get the CD. There was so much revelation in her teaching and so many kingdom principles that we could grab and apply. It'll change your life. It'll change your life. Uh, you stand and you see her ministry, you have no idea what she's been through. And I'm proud of my daughter. I'm telling you. God is saying, this is just the beginning. Amen? Worldwide. Amen? And her testimonies, if y'all, see, she, she trying to teach the word. She got testimonies after testimony after testimony. She's not just sitting up here talking about the supernatural. She lives it. Amen? She lives it. She's a woman of the word. She's a woman of faith. She's a, she's a model for Christians, not just women, but men and women. And she's a gift to the body of Christ. So we thank God for you so much. Awesome. Awesome. I'm just sitting there. If it wasn't for y'all, if it wasn't for y'all, we could have stuck around a little longer. If it wasn't for y'all. <laughs> but we thank God. Amen. Oh. Um, God, I have never done this. But the Holy Spirit said, come and bless her right now. Come sow a seed up here for her. I've never done it. Now I got a seed I'm giving her. I'm giving her a seed. But the Holy Spirit said, bless her. Just come on up like y'all know. Just come on up. Amen. 